If you thought the first two seasons of The Circle got you hooked, Circle! 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 Buckle up your seatbelts because this next season is promised to be even more entertaining. Hashtag dang! <laughs> the social experiment competition that aims to chase popularity is so popular itself that Netflix has decided to release two seasons in one year. This season, there's a highly strategic cast, mastermind catfishers, and twists that are going to surprise both the cast and audiences alike. Wait a minute, is she a twin? Warning, there will be spoilers ahead. Hardcore competitors. Season 3's contestants are called out by many to be the most strategic ones to date with players described to have adopted the first season's approach of being nice until the end, where they are cutthroat to another level. Contestant Daniel told Yahoo Canada that he thinks the third season is the craziest one yet. We've got everything, the twists, the turns. <laughs> I've got to go to a chiropractor because of how much they've got me broken and busted baby on that show. <laughs> Yikes. Producers roll. Even though the show looks like there's a disconnect between the players as they're all separated in different rooms, there's actually a lot of people behind the cameras. For one, there are producers to keep the contestants company so they won't feel extremely isolated. After all, the players are stuck in a room for 15 days straight, and just from the stress of trying to mastermind their way through the game, they can go a little nuts. Plus, the producers guide them along the way. Tim Harcourt, the show's creator and executive producer, told Variety that we didn't want them to get too lonely. Each person has a producer and a camera operator reminding them at certain stages, helping guide them through the gameplay, sometimes helping them to articulate their thoughts. But once they're up and running into the game, two or three days in, they're flying. They really get into the rhythm of how it works and how it plays out. Producers also take on the job of transcribing what the contestants say when they talk to the circle, because the system is actually not voice activated. The same goes for when contestants are messaging other people. Please message, what's poppin' everybody? There's a producer who's typing really fast behind the scenes. Contestants actually can't just send in whatever message they want. It has to be approved by the production team to keep it appropriate for Netflix. They're also in charge of selecting contestants' fake profile pictures. They have to hire models and ask them to send in as many as 50 realistic photos to catfish other castmates with. It's not just the production team that's on standby, though. They have a whole editing team that is snipping the video away in real time as if it's live due to the tight deadlines of the show's release. Plus, a whole camera crew of 115 cameras that are used to film. You can't go nowhere without a camera watching you! I'm into it. And if contestants get kicked off the show, there's actually another 10 to 12 people waiting as backup. But not all of them get used. So it turns out that contestants aren't as isolated as they seem on the show. Behind the scenes. Even though there's a hectic production schedule, the players do get some time to relax. They get one day off in the week where they're not allowed to be on their phones or laptops but are given Netflix access to keep them company. The contestants are also not allowed outside the building, because they don't want any of the members accidentally spotting them from their windows. But they are allowed access to the gym and the rooftop jacuzzi, where they have to wear ear defenders to avoid accidentally overhearing their competitors talking. It's a beautiful day to be on a roof. And even though they're American players, filming actually took place in the UK. The opening sequences are full of scenery of Chicago and Milwaukee to give the illusion that it takes place in the U.S. And despite the free room overnight stays, they don't get to live in luxury because they still have to cook and clean for themselves. Strategies So what tricks do they have up their sleeve this season, you may be wondering. Michelle, who is playing herself, hopes to become the mom of the group and align with those who are genuine looking. Oh my god, there's a little circle thing! I love it! <laughs> She told Parade that I went for someone that I could nurture, that I could get close to, that would have missed their mom or missed their family, because that's one thing that every single person will say they miss the most while being here, their family. Honestly, I don't think this show is a popularity thing. We're looking for emotional support because we do go through a lot. Meanwhile, Calvin is doing the opposite. He isn't shying away from manipulating a few people to get what he wants, as he rather sweet talks his way through because, according to him, when it comes to women, oh, my charm works 99.9% .9 of the time, he says in his introduction. The secret is eye contact and confidence. If you're confident, ladies will love you. So far, it has worked on Kai. Catfishers. Let's meet the ones who are going undercover. I'd love to know if she's a catfish or not. 
First, there's Matthew, who's a fitness consultant from Long Island and is pretending to be his best friend Ashley. It just so happens that he notices his friend is a lot more delicate looking than him, so people are a lot more trusting towards her in comparison to himself. Matthew says there's a lot of people that get intimidated by his profession and all the shirtless selfies that he takes or think he's shallow and vain, so that's one way to easily get voted off. Next, there's Nick, who's an MIT grad but is posing as a drummer. He's a very confident man, saying on the show that he thinks his prospects of winning are 95%. I'd say 95% chance I win, with the 5% off chance that there's some absolute dime that throws me off my game and I, like, throw away the money because I'm an idiot. He's also a self-proclaimed evil mastermind and is rumored to be a key player as the game goes on. He chose to be a drummer instead of himself because they're completely harmless and just want to have a good time. There's also the fact that he himself has a huge passion for drumming, demonstrated by the covers he posts on his YouTube channel. Ava and her sister Chanel are a duo pairing but are only going to pretend to be Ava. She's quite known herself as she's a social media influencer and is no stranger to reality TV because she has appeared on America's Next Top Model. Sophia is pretending to be her sister Isabella, where her strategy is to really flirt with men, but hopefully they won't fall for it because she actually plays for the other team. Twists This season would be full of unexpected surprises. As we see in the first episode, Ava and Chanel are kicked off the game. They were resurrected and came back to play the fake Michelle and convinced everyone to kick off the real Michelle. In episode 5, we expect to see Kai going to deliver the bad news to Michelle, only to be surprised by two sisters behind the profile, who've already been eliminated before. What? We expect to see confrontations and secrets shared, as well as possibly an alliance form to take the others down. Alliances Calvin has invited you to the Wolf Pack chat. Yes, Calvin. The Wolf Pack, formed by Nick, Daniel, and Calvin, is said to become even stronger in the next few episodes, until one of them eventually stirs the pot with another member. We don't know who it will be, but these three are for sure strong contenders. Possible romance. Meanwhile, Calvin will continue to flirt with Kai, but she should be careful because he's made it clear he's in it for the grand prize money, not romance. On the other hand, Nick is definitely a lot more receptive to a possible flirtationship. He's mentioned that he finds chicks with eyebrows super attractive. We just hope the person behind the eyebrows in the pictures is real. Diversity The great thing about the circle is that they welcome players with all shapes and sizes. Roxana, who has achondroplasia, a form of dwarfism, describes the season as very diverse, beautiful, and real to Yahoo Canada. Michelle adds that the show is a great opportunity for regular people, not just the people who've been in showbiz for a long time, and the unexpected people she meets is what she loves about the experience. Emotional season. What else can we expect from season three? That it's going to be a bit of every emotion. When asked to describe the overall season to Yahoo Canada, Michelle mentions that it's drama, emotional, and funny. We can't wait. With such a strategic cast, it looks like things are about to get interesting. Who do you think is going to take it all the way? Let us know in the comments. Like this video if you want to stay up to date on the latest reality TV news. And we'll see you next time on The Things Reality.